Hello there. I cannot believe that anyone out there can continue to think that the UK justice system is just. How can anyone trust our current legal and justice system in the UK? With the Post Office Horizon scandal being just the latest example of a system that's gone down the pan and well past the U-bend. To join all the other How many times are we told that the world loves to do business with the UK and in the UK because of our solid reputation for legal certainty and adherence to the concept of the rule of law? And just recently we've had that whole PPE scandal and those pandemic loans and grants and even now we have no idea just how many billions were transferred from the taxpayer to thieves. And to cap it all, no serious attempt has ever been made to recover that pandemic money. All we have is a government system trying to protect itself and its so-called contractors. The contractors being the ones who rake in the billions for taking the rest of us to the cleaners. It seems that the role of the taxpayer is just to keep financing some pretty dodgy people, to keep the money circulating through the upper echelons of the economy. So maybe loads of people love to do business with and in the UK for more practical reasons than our on-the-surface-of-it adherence to the rule of law. Maybe access to a money laundering service is of benefit, a place where a government contract is like having access to your own printing press, a place where politicians will at best turn a blind eye and at worst charge a lot of money for lobbying services, a place where the authorities and police are far more concerned and busy with woke box-ticking and fulfilling woke quotas to be bothered with preventing, detecting and catching thieves and fraudsters. Sounds like a great place to make your fortune, doesn't it? And the most galling thing is that the innocent people who get swept up in this are the ones who face the wrath of our so-called justice system. They are the ones who pay the price in jail time. This Horizon saga has been rumbling on for years, but this mother of all miscarriages of justice shows no real sign of being properly addressed. 900 or so sub-postmasters thrown to the wolves. Why? To keep them quiet, maybe, to ensure all the political and administrative slapdash errors can be kept under wraps, to hide the total incompetence of a supplier and their computer experts, maybe. Or worse. Alarm bells have been ringing across Whitehall about this for well over a decade, and all we had in response was tumbleweed. Makes you wonder what else is being covered up, doesn't it? And how many civil servants are being protected too? Now, Rishi Sunak has announced at PMQs today that new laws will be brought in to quickly exonerate and compensate these sub-postmasters. But will they also get the redress of seeing those involved in sending them down and ruining their lives being subjected to justice? One only has to watch the news to see how many past and present politicians, officials and contractor employees are buried up to their necks in this. Almost like there was a concerted attempt at a complete cover-up, whatever the cost to the convicted sub-postmasters. So will any laws be properly introduced by the government, including a proper inquiry into all those politicians and officials and contractors backing the post office line that all was well with their new horizon system, and that a sudden massive increase in sub-postmaster fraud was happening? And no one joined those dots up? And something I find rather strange is that the former chief executive of Royal Mail, Adam Crozier, is telling us he knew nothing about the Horizon scandal, when a former Royal Mail IT specialist, whose name was withheld, told the BBC that post office concerns were discussed at high levels in Royal Mail. And we've still been handing out government contracts to the company concerned Fujitsu, 
Yes, nearly 200 contracts worth 6.7 billion quid. And now the techie who developed the software wants immunity from prosecution before giving evidence to any inquiry. Despite giving evidence himself in court that the system was working properly. Something that sent many people wrongly to jail while ruining their lives. And he and another former Fujitsu IT specialist are under police investigation after a judge said that the defects and bugs in the Horizon system that they knew about were kept secret. And by the time this Covid inquiry is over, we'll probably find out that's a snow job too. And look how long the Hillsborough inquiry took. As they say, justice delayed is justice denied. And we seem to have a lot of that in the UK. And it is bringing our once venerated legal system into disrepute. And we now have the leader of the Labour Party and former head of the Crown Prosecution Service, Keir Starmer, in the spotlight. As well as the Lib Dem leader, Ed Davey, and the current Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. It is claimed that Starmer should have spotted the faulty prosecutions during his tenure at the CPS. And isn't it strange that the CPS is refusing to comment on this issue? That Ed Davey should have spotted something was amiss while he was the Postal Services Minister during the coalition years, and why did he refuse to engage with those that raised concerns over the issue? And there are questions as to why Rishi Sunak, as both Chancellor and now as Prime Minister, continues to hand out contracts to Fujitsu. While the only establishment casualty so far being the former post office boss, Paula Venels. She's now handed in her CBE and probably said goodbye to any chance of becoming the Bishop of London. Yes, the Telegraph says she was ordained in 2006 and had been an Associate Minister in the Diocese of St Albans while she was running the post office and became shortlisted for the third highest position in the Church of England. It is said that the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, supported her application. But going back to Sunak, Starmer and Davy, these are the three party leaders that will be out there in the run-up to the next general election, asking us to trust them with our vote. When they look more like establishment stooges rather than potential national leaders who would look after the people of the country that voted them in. And there have already been calls for the complacent Ed Davey to stand down as Lib Dem leader and to even resign his seat. Wonder if he'll be handing in his knighthood too. But I doubt anything will happen to these three rhino-skinned politicians. But the Lib Lab Con brands and Uni Party state will sail on regardless. I doubt any of this will filter through to the polls. But it should do, because it is an indicator of how far the UK system has fallen. Well, OK, it might always have been this bad, but much better covered up. But now that we can see it in all its glory, the voter has the opportunity to mete out some justice of its own on the whole system. To deliver a good political kicking to the current crop of politicians that have got us into this mess. Let's do exactly that.